the next things that you need to know is the experiments eh? the heating experiments and the cooling experiments and the heating curve and the cooling curve eh? so from this diagram we can see that we heat naphthalenes with water this technique is called a water bath so the first thing that you need to know is a uh, naphthalene is stirred to ensure the substance is heated evenly okay so we put this test tube inside the water and we use the water to heat the naphthalene and this technique is called the water bath we use water bath is to ensure uniform heating uh, because direct heating will cause naphthalenes to decompose uh. if you heat the naphthalene directly with the flame from a Bunsen burner, the naphthalene will be decomposed. If the boiling point is less than 100 degree, we use water bath. But if the boiling point is higher than 100 degree, uh, then we cannot use water bath because the boiling point of water is 100 degrees Celsius. And that is the maximum temperature that can reach by water. Uh, maximum temperature. Okay, Maximum temperature is 100 degrees Celsius. Okay. If the boiling point of the substance is higher than 100 degrees Celsius, then we use oil bath or the sand bath. Okay, because uh, for oil and sand, uh, the temperature can go to a few hundred degrees Celsius. So that's what you need to know, uh, and you must remember this. So heating curve. Now for heating curves, there are a few things that you need to know. First, you need to know uh, when we heat, uh, it start from solid. Uh, it start from solid. Okay. And then we heat it, it will start melting at a certain temperature. And the temperature where it starts melting is called the melting point. So this point is called the melting point. Okay. And when the solid start melting, okay, the temperature will remain unchanged. And then at this uh, process, uh, okay, the substance it exists, exists as solid and liquid. Uh. Okay, so this is one of the famous questions uh, being asked in your test or exam. So after finish melting, uh, then 100% uh, of the substance become liquid and the temperature will increase again. The temperature will increase again and up to certain temperature, then it will start boiling. And therefore, this temperature is called the boiling point. Called the boiling point. And when the substance start uh, boiling, eh, so it will exist as liquid and gas. Eh? It will exist as liquid and gas. And after it's uh, finished boiling, then the temperature increase again, and then it exists as gas. What else that you need to know? Okay, sometimes they will ask you why the temperature increase. Okay, we heat it, the temperature increase, but why? That is because if we heat something, the heat energy or the thermal energy supply uh, has increased the average kinetic energy. So just now we have explained that the temperature is related to the average kinetic energy, right? So if you heat something, you will increase the average kinetic energy and hence you increase the temperature. Okay, another thing that they will ask is um, when it start melting, uh, why the temperature remain unchanged? Actually, this is given in the notes. Uh, okay, you can read it from the notes. Now the temperature remain unchanged is because the heat supply, uh, that's the heat energy, uh, the heat supply is used to overcome the attraction force or force of the attractions between the particles. Make sure that you use the word force of attractions. Uh. A lot of students, they write uh, bond, the bond. Uh. So they say the heat supply is used to break the bond. If you use, if you say break the bond, then wrong okay so the heat energy is not used to break the bond eh? okay but it's used to break the force or overcome the force you can say break the force of attraction fine okay or you say overcome the force of attraction is also okay yeah is to break the force of attractions between the particles of the solids eh? uh, rather than increase the kinetic energy if you increase the kinetic energy, you, you will increase the temperature, okay? Okay, they will also ask you why the temperature remain unchanged when the substance uh, undergoes boiling. And um, the explanation is uh, about the same as what uh, we discussed just now, but with a little difference, eh? a little difference. The temperature remain unchanged because all the heat supply is used to overcome the force of attractions, okay? Force of attractions between the particle and 
the atmospheric pressure. During boilings, not only we need to overcome the force of attractions, we need to overcome the atmospheric pressure press on the uh, particles of the liquid as well. So you need to overcome two forces. Eh? One is the forces of attraction and another one is the, the force caused by the atmospheric pressure.